Hello everyone, welcome to Mojo Grip Mike here. Today, we're going to talk about stalls. Now, I made a video in the past where I talked about the subject matter and I tried to explain it in the simplest form possible, but I got some heat on that because I didn't necessarily explain it based on the textbook, okay? Now, before I move forward, I do want to put a full disclaimer out there that every information shared in this video and all of my videos are purely for viewership and entertainment purpose only. I'm not a CFI. Things that I talk about are based on my own personal understanding on the subject matter. So make sure that you fact check using your own resources. All right, now that we have that out of the way, what is a stall? Okay, the textbook defines stall as a state which the airplane comes to when you reach what's called a critical angle of attack. When you reach or exceed your critical angle of attack, then the airplane stalls. Angle of attack is a term in aerodynamics, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. Angle of attack is actually necessary. It's part of what helps produce lift for the airplane, for the airplane to be able to fly, okay? But like everything else in aerodynamics and aviation, there's an envelope, there's a limit. Here's a demo airplane here. Don't mind my beat up cub here. Generally speaking, I hope you can still see my face. Most single engine airplanes like this one, the critical angle of attack is about, I would say between 15 and 20 degrees of your flight path. So assuming this is your straight flight path, right? Your critical angle of attack could be right about here. So when you pitch the nose of this airplane so far up this way, then you can get to that critical angle of attack and the airplane stalls. Now, a lot of this might still sound too technical for you, all right? So let's, let's, let's go a little bit backwards. As I've said in my other videos, the reason why this airplane is able to fly, even this toy, this is an RC airplane, and it can fly. And the reason why this object is able to fly is because you have air flowing over its wings here. And that air in aviation is referred to as your relative wind. And your relative wind always travel opposite to your flight path. So this airplane is flying this way, your relative wind is basically coming towards you. And so that's the air that flows over your wings. And any time that that air or that process is interrupted or altered in any way, you risk a chance of stalling the airplane. So the airplane manufacturer sets or gives you a stall speed that, okay, don't fly the airplane this slow. If you do, you're going to stall it. But again, all of that during your training makes you focus on just airspeed. But guess what? A stall can happen at any point in your flight. It doesn't really depend on your airspeed. You can be going slow, you can be traveling fast, you can still stall the airplane. And so that's why I wanna paint a broader picture of what causes a stall. Okay, so let's take airspeed and just put it aside. A lot of other factors can cause an airplane to stall. And one of the major factors is turning. And that's what I really want to focus on in this video. When you make a maneuver such like a turn, you risk the chances of stalling your airplane. When you turn, which means you bank the airplane one way or the other, you can go right or left. So assuming we're doing a turn like this, you see what happened to the airplane? Remember, you were in a straight flight before, right? And you have relative wind going over your wings. When you now go this way, Guess what? You've interrupted that process of air flowing over your wings, and now you have one wing has more lift than the other. What that also means is that one wing is carrying more load on that airplane. So every time you turn, have in your mind that there's a risk of stalling this airplane because I've interrupted the process of air flowing over my wings. And guess what? That has nothing to do with your airspeed. Like I said, if you're doing a turn, you can be flying at a normal cruise speed or whatever have you. And so what typically causes a stall during a turn is when you bank the airplane too steep. And keep in mind, all airplanes are built differently. So there are airplanes that you can fly like that. There's airplanes that you can spin all around and it's just going to be okay. But focusing on just your normal single engine airplanes, right? When you turn too steep, you can interrupt that process of air flowing over your wings so much that you reach your critical angle of attack and that can cause an airplane to stall. 
And stalls are especially dangerous during a turn because a stall during a turn can lead to the airplane spinning. So again, let's go back. This is this is you. This is the airplane. If you turn too steep, and again, this can happen at any altitude. Say you turn too steep, and one wing stalls, right? If one wing stalls and you don't correct that stall, or you don't have enough room to correct that stall, that stall can very well lead to a spin. And what happens in a spin is you stall one wing, all right? And if it's not corrected, it brings the other wing to a state of stall. And now you go from flying this way, now you're like this, and then now you go like this, and then the airplane starts spinning. The textbook defines stall as exceeding, reaching or exceeding your critical angle of attack, but I want you to have a better understanding. Think of a stall as when I don't have enough lift to keep in my flat path, or I lose my lift completely and now the airplane is descending, which can simply be put when the airplane stops flying. And I say that delicately because technically you're still in the air, but again, you're not flying because you don't have enough lift to keep you afloat. So to me, that would give you a broader understanding of what a stall is. So generally speaking, when you're coming into land, you run what's called a rectangular course, all right? And a rectangular course is basically you, you take off, say you, you're practicing just landings, right? You take off from the runway. When you take off, you turn this way, you come back down, you turn base this way, and then you go back in. That's a full rectangular course. Sometimes you can have a situation where you overshot the runway. So you go all the way this way and you're like, oh man, my runway is back there. So let me turn to get into the normal straight path for me to land the airplane. And what you have pilots do sometimes is because they overshot the runway, then they'll make that turn even more steep than it should be in order to get back in a straight path to land now again because your airplane is already slow and you're making a steep turn while you're really low to the ground you risk stalling that airplane and sadly that's been the case in a lot of these accidents where you have pilots make steep turns low to the ground when they're heavy and when they're slow well i hope you learned something new if you did and enjoyed the video please give a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please go ahead and do so i release a video twice a week Again, my name is Mike, and I love to hear what you think or what your experience is with stalls. Whether you're a student or a CFI, we can all learn from each other. All right, until next video, guys, take care. Peace.